Greetings and welcome to Shiodome in Tokyo. That up there is our destination. We're making our way up the escalators to the second floor of the Nippon Tere, uh, or the Entere building. And there's the escalator right there. How you doing, everybody? Welcome to a beautiful day in Tokyo. Um, this clock that we're going to is very special and it strikes three times a day. Today it's gonna happen and start in about three minutes from now. So I started a little bit earlier, but this is a point, all right? If you wanna to go to the Ghibli Museum, you need to get tickets, and it's very hard to do that, and I've had some viewers complain that they can't go because the tickets are always sold out. So this is one of the things that you could do, I don't know, as like a backup plan, because it's pretty cool, and uh, it's something that you won't find in the museum. This clock is the biggest, well, one of the biggest in the world. Wow, there's the leg of it. You see it, it's made out of this, plated copper, it's awesome. Check it out. I heard it's 28 tons. 18 meters by 12 meters. All right, here's the sign for it right here. It is designed by uh, Hayao Miyazaki, who is the creator, the Walt Disney of Ghibli. And on the weekends, it'll start at 10, but on the weekdays like today, it's gonna start at 12. It does start three minutes early, something that you have to uh, have to know. And there's already a small crowd of six people. <laughs> and here we got 250. There it is. This might actually be one of the better spots, but I'm gonna take you out to the front to get a better look. There's Tokyo Tower over there. Ah, oh, this is exciting. All right, there we go. We're right in the front of it now. I'm literally directly in front of the clock, so when this thing strikes and starts to move, we're gonna have an amazing view. I might take you over there to get a closer look. The entire show lasts for about three minutes, um, and this is the first time I've ever actually been here in front of it to watch. Yeah, it's a beautiful day in Tokyo. It's a free attraction. I mean, why not come and visit this? Now, it was designed and it was completed in the year 2006, so it's, it's, uh, not a 19th, 20th century type of thing. It's new. And it was built, I think, out of the design of Howl's Moving Castle. I don't know if you're a Ghibli fan, but Howl's Moving Castle is, um, I thought it was a pretty good movie, but you can see that's what the legs are for. It moves. This clock moves. I see our Fred Tyler's in the house. <laughs> Welcome. All right. It is made of, I believe, um, I read it was 28 tons, but you can see just the amount of work that they did on this. Just tons and tons and tons of, of layers and, and st of copper and metal, mostly copper. And that's why it weighs so much. But it is considered one of the biggest clocks in the world. I don't know in the rankings where it sits, but it's got to be in the top 10. Just, you, no one makes clocks this big and this heavy anymore. We're, we live in a digital world and this is an analog thing. So it's gonna be starting. This is very hard to find, by the way. So if you're rushing to get here and you don't know where you're going, you're gonna get lost. Because it's in the maze that we call Shiodome. All right, and after this clock finishes, I'm gonna take you on a little bit of, of, of a tour around Shiodome, so maybe you can find yourself, find your way around, and maybe you might discover something else besides the clock. We, we're on the second floor. This might give you a little bit of orientation. And most people start from down there because that's where the subway for Shiodome Station comes. And you can walk here from Shimbashi Station. It's about a five minute walk. But most people will be coming here from the Oedo line. All right, we're just, we're just a minute away from it starting. This is really exciting. This is really exciting. People are looking at me and, and wondering what I'm doing here waiting. Ah, oh, there it goes. The Ghibli clock is now in motion. What's moving? What's moving? Now with all of the moving parts, I figure it's gonna take a little bit of time build up some momentum. Ah, there we go. The organs are warming up. Ah. He's 
calling everybody. Wake up. Oh wow. You can't keep your eyes in one place. They've got the fires going and Hal's moving castle. Stuff happening all over the place. All right, everybody, just enjoy the show. Hands are moving. Oh, the cannons are out. Oh, there they go. There they go. Oh, check it out. Do you see? Inside the balls, they've opened up. Sorry about that. And that's it, we're done. There you go. The clock. Hey guys, so before we go and walk around the area, let's take a closer look at this clock from the feet all the way up to its hat. There you go. So it is one of the biggest clocks in the world, as I said. And you can see just the amount of work that they did when Ghibli makes something. They make it really well. This thing looks absolutely beautiful. And wow, look at the riveting on this. It is made of copper, so you see some of the, I guess it's oxidation, some of the, that green color off of the rivets on the clock. You can feel the texture on it. You can actually touch it if you want to. It's, uh, the pigeons can do it, why can't I? But the layers of it, it's just an amazing, an amazing uh, clock. I was gonna say building or person, <laughs> like a robot, I guess. Like an 18th century robot, like what they would build things in another era because they didn't have all of the carbon alloy and things like that. But they do have copper. All right, okay, now I can see the speakers are underneath it. So it does have speakers, do you see that? That's interesting. I'm sure somewhere there's a documentary on how they made this. And all of the little details, they even have these plastic, I believe it's plastic. I wonder if somebody goes up and waters that. But it's the little details of this clock, I think, that make it special. 
the amount of work that it must have taken. I think it took like years, of course. It took years, but how many people worked on this? There are the, some of the moving cogs underneath it. And if you look up, sorry, the sun is directly above us too. You can see that the clock is textured a little bit and I love the natural cracks in it. Very ghibli, very natural. And there are the two workers. Now that's interesting. Look at their faces. The faces. <laughs> I believe I found one of the only dead zones in this, in this area. Uh, it's right there. But from here, you can take a look and see that their heads the designs of them is, is pretty cool. Up close, it doesn't look like that, but from here you can see the mustache. It does look like people, but they, they did it in a way that was really, well, ghibli. <laughs> there's no other way to say it. You can see that on the, up on the top, there's another dude who's, who's cranking the wheel, getting the fire going. And up there's some water steaming. Do you see that? I guess that's, that's uh, boiling some water up there maybe. And then there are the cannons sticking out of it. It's really an impressive, it's, it's an impressive Ghibli Easter egg. And I like to call these Easter eggs, right? The city of Tokyo has got a ton of these little teeny Easter eggs like um, Godzilla and Shinjuku. You'll be walking around and you go, what? That's Godzilla. It's, it's kind of this little amazing thing about Tokyo that you'll find if you just walk around. This is another Godzilla, Godzilla not just in Shinjuku, but in Yonakucho. There's um, the Ghibli Museum, which is not an Easter egg, but like, I, I, I want people to, who come here and are disappointed because they, they can't get tickets. You have other options. If you want to see Ghibli stuff, you can go to the Ghibli Museum. You can try to get the tickets, and if you can't, you can come here. And for three times a day, four times on weekends, you can see the clock moving and play a song and get that kind of Ghibli feeling come to life in the city of Tokyo. And that's pretty cool. There's also um, the Ghibli stores, and there's three or four of them that are quite big. There's many of them, actually, but there's three or four that are quite big. One of them is in Ikebukuro. Probably the biggest one is in Ikebukuro in the Sunshine City. Very, very cool. Definitely um, one of these places that you should check out if you can't get in to the museum. The museum, you can only get the tickets at Lawson's, and if you don't get it at Lawson's, they like sell for 10 times the price on the internet because they know they can take advantage of the tourists. Because how many times are you gonna be coming to Tokyo? You gotta see the Ghibli Museum when you can. There's one in Yokohama as well. I know this is a bit of a dark subject matter, John, but do you think you'll ever do a video documentary on Japan's uh, hikikomori problems? It's very sad. Probably not. I don't pick any sad topics. I'll try to look at the bright side. Somebody else will do the sad stuff. Somebody else will do the sad stuff. Yeah. So for, the, for, us, for those of you who are joining us right here is right now, here's the schedule. It says it, it only does it on sunny days. So if it's raining, it won't, it won't, it won't uh, operate. So in the rainy season, we're kind of lucky to have caught this. And then the times on the weekends, it starts at 10. And then 12, 3, uh, 6, and 8 p.m. I didn't know about the 8 p.m. one, but the night night one is is might might be more special because the clock actually is illuminated a little bit, which makes it well more ghibli. I think it, it just gives you this magical feeling when it's lit up at night. The official name of this clock is not Ghibli clock. Okay, it's this is the um, Nitere or Nippon TV, uh, Nippon TV Station, one of the buildings that they have here. And the official name is Miyazaki Hayao. Um, I, can't, I can't read that. I know it's the uh, Odoki, Odoki meaning the grand clock. So it's the Nippon Tere Odoki. So that's the official name. But it's designed by, by uh, Hayao Miyazaki, yes every single detail and you know because he did not hold back on this thing it is it is massive in scale and the design and this and the details are incredible you would expect no less from ghibli so just one more panning of this 
amazing clock and then we're gonna go down and I'll show you some of the area. The sun is directly overhead right now. It's it's 12.05. Beautiful, isn't it? And again, it's not easy to find. It's made of copper, um, real copper. You can see the oxidation. I guess you that's what you would call it that you get with copper. So someone's got to start polishing this thing, don't you think? But it's one of the, the um, oh, there's the, the, there's the leg. Do you see that? Lady's having lunch by the leg. At any moment, she could get crushed as this clock comes to life in three hours. I hope she finishes her lunch in three hours or less because it will come alive again. I did like how these balls opened up and you could see inside of them. Just kind of these small little touches. But that's the thing with the city. I think if, if, if everything was so obvious a tourist attraction, we'd have lines here. But the reason why there are only six people watching is because I don't think a lot of people could find this. It's not the easiest attraction to find. If you do make it here, you never forget because you probably got lost two or three times and found some interesting things on the way. So let's go check out the area and see what we can see. Now, most of these people that are walking by here, they're walking past me. They get to see this clock every day. Look, they, they don't care. They've probably seen it a hundred times. That was my first time. I've, I've actually been walking, do you see down here, out of the Oedo line, and I've heard the clock moving, but I've never gotten a chance to walk around and, and, and come up here and then see it. So this is the first time. YouTube gave me, oh, they gave me a free super chat, so it's yours. Really? Thank you. Thank you, Sean. I didn't know that. YouTube's giving free super chats. Hey, now. <laughs> I think they're, they're cool with that because they, they, they do take a nice, nice chunk out of it, I believe. It's all right. All right, let's go down underground. I, I, can't, I can't speak for the signal strength down there, but we are going to do our best to discover something underground. Follow this lady. This is also where one of the, the first Taco Bells was, so all of the foreign residents know about know about uh, where all of the Taco Bells were. Nobody goes there anymore because it's, it's three times more expensive than the, than the Taco Bell in the United States and the menu's way too small. But when it first came back to Japan, a lot of the foreign residents were, were just blown away by, by the Taco Bell. Like, what, Taco Bell's back? They had Taco Bell in 1998 when I first came here, a test store in Nagoya, but it went out of business because people thought that Taco in, in Japan, we say takosu. We don't say taco for taco. We say takosu. So they went to Taco Bell looking for takoyaki. And so it went out of business. Because when they saw, found Mexican food, that's not what they, they were stopping there for. So it took, it took 20 years before um, Japan was ready for Taco Bell. Just because Taco Bell didn't want to change the name. This is interesting. This is one of the big... And there's a few of these little Easter eggs here for the Rugby World Cup. There are no events for the Rugby World Cup. It starts... Um, at least on Nitere, which is Nippon Television, on September 20th. I, I thought th this goes on more in October, but this is the, uh, a massive rugby ball. And the Rugby World Cup is being held in Japan for the first time a year before the Olympics. I think they did that on purpose to try to steal some of the Olympic thunder. But it could work against them because the Olympic thunder is strong is stronger than the Rugby World Cup, maybe. And a lot of people don't even know that the Rugby World Cup is go going on, including a lot of the locals. Rugby's doing a good job, though, to try to bring some attention to it. All right, we're going to go down here now and take a look. But up here on the second floor, there's a Rose and Crown pub. There's some restaurants up here. And a lot of people are now leaving the offices and going to lunch. So we're going to run, run, run past a lot of office workers in white button-down shirts. If you haven't already joined our Discord server, jump on there. It's a lot of fun. It's open. It's only in Japan 24 hours a day. And you'll see in the, ch in the chat right now, one of our moderators will probably copy and paste. Yeah, there you go. UFO Bob's on it. It's free. And it's really cool. After this live stream, I might jump on a Discord chat. So that's the, that's the Yuriko Ome. Um, manless, driverless monorail that goes by here. And it's one of the stops on the Yuri Kamome. So if you're going to Odaiba, you can make a stop here.
your Chio Dome. All right, let's go for a little. As you can see on the billboard across Misosaka is a big deal here. Buildings around these skyscrapers, I believe Den. I've been there a couple of times. And then once you go underneath here, you lose it. Uh, there's the, you see the Nippon Terebi, the Jap, uh, Nippon Terebi shop right, right in the center of your screen is the, where we just left. So that should give you an idea. There are some nice restaurants. You can see the Taco Bell now coming into view, but I highly recommend that you skip that and maybe go around the corner to the other place. I think it's Udon. What is, I've never been, yeah, it's Udon. I came here with Kanai once. This is not, not bad. Oh, this is a kare udon. Oh, wow, that looks really good. I think I might have just found my lunch. It looks healthy. That's $4 for that. These statues are kind of famous, too. I'm not sure who the designer was, but it definitely was not um, Hayao Miyazaki. <laughs> who wants to ride one of these things? You can sit on them. They're, ben they're benches. These are benches. And um, if you do internet search these, they are in some various positions. I don't know why. But they're benches. They're to sit on. I guess somebody was trying to get creative like this taco. Tacos. A lot of moving parts to this station as well. So I'm going to go over here and across the building to the Sony Plaza. So we're now underground. Peter and I came here to see the Christmas lights about two years ago. And we met two nice people from Australia who came and found us. <laughs> found us on the uh, live stream and said hi. That was nice. Yeah, across the way, this is where things get really complicated. Underneath here, it's so easy to get disoriented. They have signs here in English as well. But a lot of people don't know what they mean. Hamariku is the garden. It's a beautiful garden. To sh uh, Shimbashi Station. There's the Panasonic, the Shiodome uh, City Center. Anna's headquarters is in the Shiodome City Center. That's ANA, the airline. And there's a Tower Records, a Mini Tower Records. So if you find the Mini Tower Records, hang a right, and that's where you'll find the Taco Bell. And when you find the Taco Bell, you'll see the clock around the corner, ups, ups two flights of escalators like we just came. So I hope that's useful for you. Uh, Chris30 writes in here, I'm going to Tokyo as an exchange student next year, so thanks for showcasing these cool places for me to go. You're very welcome. I'm going to try to do more of the attractions of Tokyo. Tokyo's got, and we pronounce it Tokyo, by the way, two syllables, but because of the way we say it in English, I'll say it the American way sometimes, and then I'll say it the uh, Japanese way when I'm speaking Japanese. So it's Tokyo weeks when I'm here, because in, in the summer a lot of people come here and they want to see it. So we're going to take you to them. Through this, i suspicious when YouTube updates the app and they just put in the basic we updated the app as the description for what they did to it. We changed the time continuance. It's like, well, give us some information because maybe I don't want to update the app. Ah, oh, this looks really good. This could be a daimyo present for the daimyo. Look at this. Oh, wow. This is like mochi. Nama warabi mochi. Not bad. I like mochi. But I, I love how they just sell it in the middle of the station here. Oh, 
wow, look at this. It's like mochi sandwich. Oh man, anything with, with cr baked and cream inside of it is amazing. So we're walking towards Shimbashi Station. This is the maze that's going on. We'll make our way outside. So this is a good way for you to understand, to find the way from Shimbashi Station. It's not that far. Shimbashi's on the Yamanote line. And I think everybody, if you can make your way to the Yamanote line on Ed Shibuya or Shinjuku, you'll be able to find your way to Shinbashi, which means new bridge in English. Yeah, the roof is very low. Some of the buildings that were constructed in the 1970s, and this is one of them, the 60s and 70s, they're very, very low. Um, and it was made like that because people weren't that tall anyways. And they just wanted to, they built it really fast. Especially during, all of the construction that happened after World War II, but before the 1964 Olympics, was done super fast. But it was done well. I mean, it stands the test of time, but it does look retro. And this is a tough station to renovate. Shinbashi Station is, um, it's had some renovations, but it's still, it's a hard one to renovate because it's a busy one. And you'd have to really shut things down. And it's been amazingly annoying for anybody that's going through Shibuya Station. Very, very annoying because of the construction. All right, we're going up, and I'm going to take you to take you to the place I went yesterday. I called on their Discord server to some people that were that were awake in front of the biggest meeting spot in this area of Tokyo, and you have to go underneath Shimbashi Station. And now we're we're just going on a little bit of a tour. For those joining us, we've already seen the Hayao Miyazaki's big clock at the Nitere Building. This area of the station has been renovated a little bit, so it's wider. Used to be such a small, narrow walkway. Now it's, it's, it's opened up. If you come here at midnight, you'll see people making out goodnight kisses. Very unusual for Japan. Office workers having flings, saying goodbye at the tickets, ticket, ticket turnstiles. <laughs> I've seen it. It just doesn't, it doesn't, um, I, I don't know, from about 15, 15 years ago when I came, I remember just walking through this station very often at night after going out with, for business dinners and stuff and you come back and you see people having affairs and the long kiss goodnight, not a normal sight in Japan. Boom. Now we're on the other side of old Shimbashi, tons and tons of bars loads of izakaya, places to eat, drink, underneath the Yamanote line, you can see. There's a ton of character, do you see? The, underneath here, rust and steel meeting cement. This could be a Ghibli design as well. But it's above, above the train tracks, you can see where we came from. And that's Shiodome, that's the new area. That's the site of maybe it could be called New Shimbashi or New, New, New Shimbashi. All right, I'm walking you around as the Yamanote line above me makes its way in to Shimbashi Station. We're gonna walk just a little bit around Shimbashi and take a look at the other side. Shiodome has a ton of hotels. It's got a ton of hotels that are really nice to, to stay in. And Shiodome is pretty central. That's an interesting vending machine. Check this out. Grand opening. I'm always attracted by the, the sound of a rolling train. That's the Keihin Tohoku line, I think.
interesting. Let's see what we got here. Latte rich. Jungle, what is that? Jungle, Jungle Man. This is that drink's called Jungle Man. What? It's got a tank on it. Do you see this? There's a tank on this. What? I've never seen Jungle Man before. Should we get this? What do you think? Should we get a Jungle Man? All right, let's get a Jungle Man. I know I'm gonna hate it. All right, if you don't want Jungle Man, all right, if you're not into Jungle Man, you can try Miracle Body. <laughs> That's another drink. Do you think Miracle Body might help me out? I, I'm, I could use a diet. I could use a Miracle. And then this one that looks like a bottle of soy sauce. Nanchate Orange. Cheerio Japan. What? This is weird. I don't know. What do you think? So we got Jungle Juice, Miracle Body, a soy sauce looking drink. It even says in here, this is not soy sauce. What? What? This is really bizarre. There's Amazake with stuff floating in it. Um, what else do we got here? Oh, this is caramel flavored pudding drink. What? That's a pudding drink? All right, everyone's saying go for Jungle Man. All right, I guess we're gonna go Jungle Man. Sorry, soy sauce looking drink. You're, this, you're gonna have to take a back seat to Jungle Man. They look insulted. But how can you pass up Jungle Man for 100 yen? All right, Jungle Man, you're coming with us. There's a 100 yen coin. That's all it costs. One coin. Jungle Man, welcome. Out of the jungle and into the urban area. Jungle Man is here. Jungle Man. Calorie off. Thank goodness for that. Oh, this is a plane design. I wanted a tank. I don't, I'm guessing it'll taste the same. <laughs> this live stream's getting a little weird. Jungle Man. How do you sound, Jungle Man? Am I unleashing the jungle? Oh man, that is sweet. It's Mountain Dew ripoff. Yeah. Oh, it tastes like that drink Match. Have you, have you seen that before? I've, I've talked about Match before a couple of times. Match is, it tastes like melted Pez into soda water. Like they've melted 100,000 Pez into it. Oh man. All right, we're gonna keep Jungle Man in the bottle. And I'm gonna let my wife try it. <laughs> See if she's thirsty later. All right, so this is Shimbashi. It's a little bit of a pit stop, that was fun. So this is Shimbashi. Um, oh, hold on a second. Hey, David Kimura. Hi, John, finally making a live stream. Thanks, David. I appreciate that, David. All right, over here, um, you can cut through and there's a big, you see this clearing just right away from Sh Shimbashi Station? In the summer, they usually have festivals and, and events going on in there. And they do have a Bono Dodi, a dance that happens in August. So you might want to keep your eye on that if you're in the area. It's one of the more lively um, intersections, areas of Tokyo. But I would say Shimbashi is like salaryman town, you know? This is the old salaryman town where time sort of stands still in the Showa era, which is before the Heisei era, because now we're in the Reiwa era. The Showa era still kind of has some power here because the people that are in their 60s, you'll find them here. You'll find a lot of them here. In fact, you'll find a lot of them everywhere. <laughs> it's true. We're, we're rounding the new, the new Shinbashi building, which essentially means new, new Shinbashi building. Right there, the new Shimbashi building. And this building is famous for being 
super retro. It's, it is really like, and just the design of it, you can see, is made out of cement. It's one of the first unique buildings that I saw when I came into Tokyo for the first time in 1998. I remember looking outside the Shinkansen and you go right past it. Look at these little windows. There's somebody popped it open right there. Looks like a safe has opened up. Somebody opened up one of the windows. You almost never see a window open on the new Shimbashi building. That's cool. But inside there, I've heard on the fifth floor is that the vending machine that a lot of perverted people are looking for. You know what I mean. They seem to have a clientele for that in this in the uh, old salaryman town. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Let's keep it family friendly. Um, this is Katsuya and it is crowded. People are lining up and waiting because it's lunchtime here. Hey, there's a mini jungle. This, this one has a jungle man in here too. Oh, look, they're promoting. This is a jungle man promotion. They have five different ones. There's a tank, a battleship, a plane, a jeep, and another kind of a plane. How cool is that? All right, thank you, jungle man. Thank you for making me want to brush my teeth again. And here, ladies and gentlemen, in the front of your screen, oh, there goes the Shinkansen, if you, if you caught that on the right side. In front of you is one of the biggest meeting spots in the entire city of Tokyo. Everybody who's been here, who lives here, knows about this spot. Does it rival Shibuya's Hachiko Crossing? No. And you can get lost there. So if you're gonna meet your friends, you meet them in front of the old train, the old Shimbashi train. Shimbashi Station is one of the original first stations of Tokyo. This train kind of a symbol of it, but I, I believe this train stopped around 1912 and then it moved here um, when it was decommissioned. And now a lot of people will meet in this plaza here and they've made it a little bit better. There's a smoking area there, so if you're lucky or unlucky, depends if you're a smoker, all of that free smoke will waft your way. It's still Japan. And there's a Yamanote line up there. I do like it. So people getting off the train can see you waiting here. So it's, it's, it's kind of an ideal spot. It's right outside of the um, Hibiya, Hibiya exit of Shimbashi Station right there. Yeah. So do you have any questions? I will now take questions on our live stream on the clock or the area, or whatever you are interested in, the next couple of minutes is up to you. Hit that like button if you enjoy these kinds of Tokyo attraction videos. If we can get a thousand likes on this, I know that this is a big deal to people and they wanna see more. What made it you, motivated you to be a YouTuber? Uh, Jacob, I have a, a 360 video on the main channel about this, but um, I was, I've been, I, wow takes me back a while. So I came here in 1998, but I started working at NHK in, 19, in 2008 as a reporter for a show called Tokyo Eye. And I did that show for about 50 times over the last, over, over a six, six or seven year span. And after the great Tohoku earthquake, uh, 2011, um, I don't know, I didn't think NHK was doing enough to show the beauty of Japan in a fun way. I thought it was too boring and I wanted to help out Japan because people weren't coming here. Now everyone's coming to Japan, but at the time people weren't coming here. So that was the catalyst to start Only in Japan. In 2012, I started to plan out Only in Japan channel and what I wanted to do with it. And in 2013, in February, I launched it um, with the help of, of a company called Wow Corporation. And I was able to travel all around the country and make some videos. Uh, I still do it. I'm still a one-man band, but I'm, I'm finding help a little bit more from, from people. And I, it's, Patreon has helped me, that's another platform um, people are supporting the channel, but Patreon has helped me um, get a cameraman. So we've got Dan who's going to be helping me. 
and I'm, I've got an assistant this summer for the first time, um, Hannah, who's helping me book places. And it's gonna, we got some amazing episodes coming up and it's mostly through her efforts because I can edit the videos um, while she's planning and talking with locations to get permission. I wouldn't say I saved Japan. <laughs> I de definitely didn't. But at the time, in, 19, in, in 2011, a lot of Westerners were leaving um, Japan. We called them fly jeans. There's the gaijin, you know, foreigners, but we called them fly jeans because they flew out of here with the first trouble hit, you know. Oh my gosh, we might get, you might, there could be radiation all over the place. Well, yeah, probably people want to leave, but, uh, you know, if you're part of Japan, you didn't leave, and I didn't leave. I didn't want to be a fly jean. But my motivation was different, though. There was no reason to, where would I go? I didn't want to go back to the U.S. What are those guys with red shirts handing out? Oh, tissues. So in Japan, tissues is something that you'll get all over the place for free. Um, usually there's an advertisement for a pachinko shop or something. Let's see what else we got here. Is that uh, Steam Loco Square? Yes, yes. Is a train that related to one of the science museums in Ueno? It's related to one of the last trains uh, of its kind that ran on, on this line. She, there was no Tokyo station for a long time at the turn of the century. So the trains came just, when they came to Tokyo, they came as far as Jimbashi. I believe this was the end of the line, like uh, over a hundred years ago. And they extended it. But this train, I believe, was just decommissioned in, in the early teens of the 20th century. And they just put it here and it's, it's been here for a while. Uh, but it's it's an it's a meeting place for everybody that, that everybody knows about. I do do meetups, Jennifer, but not recently because wow, that train is loud. Nice honk before it comes into the station. I do do meetups, but uh, I haven't done that for a while. I don't know. I just it's hard to do it. What is your favorite train station jingle? Matt writes in here. I don't know, that's a hard one. They're all pretty good. Akihabara's is, is memorable because I, I've, I'm there a lot. Um, I don't know. I do like the ones up north that people don't ride. And you're giving me kind of an idea for next weekend if I have time to do a live stream. The jingles are interesting. The ones from between Ueno and Ikebukuro stations that not a lot of people go to have some pretty neat jingles. Um, but you have to ride the Yamanote line and take them all in. When are you going next to Karaoke Spot? No plans, Chris. How long did it take to learn Japanese language? I'm still learning Bowen. Uh, I, I learned by studying from books and talking to grannies in Mr. Donuts. I never went to class. It shows uh, I'm not a I'm not I'm a conversational speaker, but I'm not a fluent native speaker by any means. But it's it's enough to make this show and get around comfortably, and I'm very happy. Uh, my wife and I talk in Japanese mostly. She's angry because I don't teach her English enough. She says, but this is Japan. One in Japan, you speak Japanese. Rage relief, <laughs> rage relief. Thank you. I will take it, and I will have lunch with it. <laughs> I'm not sure, Brickman, what's for lunch? Um, I'm going to maybe go back home and get back to work. There's a new video that I want to try to release tonight on Kochi's Sunday Market. And if you're vegan or vegetarian, you, you're going to like this market because it's a lot of vegetables. There's some historical photos of the area. This is uh, Karasumori Inari Sha Shrine. Uh, uh, Karasumori Jinja Shrine, and it was the location was was uh, here, I believe, and they had to move it for the station. Interesting. Chicken katsu sandwich is pretty good. Dragon, Dragon Dark Fire, it's pretty good. Do you plan on attending the Summer Olympics? Okay, that's a good that's a good question. I do it. it I do plan to be here. But I didn't get any tickets. We failed the lottery. Kanai and I both got got um, rejection letters. But that just means we save about three thousand dollars because those tickets aren't free. You win the lottery, and then they send you a bill. And if you went into, if you got it, uh, if you won tickets to the opening ceremony, 
then most likely you got a bill of about four thousand dollars or more all right so the good thing about not all right I'll tell you what i didn't get into the opening ceremony you get a ticket so that that means i'll probably buy like a 65 inch oled tv <laughs> and watch it in in 8k or something right um you may be able to see the torch runners that's true i'm gonna i'm gonna take a look at the course and maybe go out in the middle of nowhere and do a video um all across japan in places where there's nobody cheering them on and then we can cheer them on i think that'd be pretty cool um the olympic torch relay is something that i, I will try to cover will you live stream the olympics if i will if i can get in i'll live stream you know the tv is going to be showing some of the events but i think it's going to be pretty interesting just to just to live stream the stuff that's happening around the olympics the events that are happening outside the venues the stuff that the TV networks never show you, I think that's what, what I can I could stream on the Only Japan Go channel and show you that, because it's pretty interesting. Um, a lot of people that told me that they left the Sydney, in, during the Sydney 2000 Olympics, a lot of people that left the city because they thought it was gonna be too crowded, felt a lot of remorse in doing that, because they, they missed a lot of fun events, because the city is only like that once, right? The city is only like this one. Tokyo will only be like, this twice because we had this in 1964 but I think 2000, 2020 is just going to be incredible it's one of those years where the decade changes it's the, you know you just you could feel the future happening everyone is holding back for 2020 all the te technology companies Sony Panasonic they're all holding back their tech to release in 2020 uh, you just feel like this big explosion that's going to happen and I, I think covering the stuff that's happening around the olympics is going to be huge we're going to have 5g all over tokyo but 5g signal is not good it's something that you, you can't be far away from the from the transmitter in order to have a clear 5g signal so maybe i'll be broadcasting in 4k because 5g would allow me to do that it would allow me a massive amount of bandwidth some good questions you got here all right, I'll take one more, one more question. If we can get the 400 likes, I might take you to an extended live stream around Shimbashi, but we're never gonna get the 400 likes in five minutes because we're really slow to get the 300. One more question or 400 likes. It's up to you now. Community involvement. Do you think it is a bath month? What is this? Do you think it's a bath month for the Olympics? A bad month, yes. The Olympics should have been held. Everybody knows this. It, Japanese summer is insane. It's insanely hot. It's like a sauna. And, and people in the Middle East and in Singapore and all these places go, well, we're hotter, we're hotter. Delhi gets to 45 degrees. No, nah, no. Nah. It doesn't have this humidity of Tokyo. It drains you. It's hot. It's painful. You go outside and you just start sweating. It's awful. So I think, I think, um, the reason why the 1964 Olympics was held in October, I repeat, the 1964 Olympics was held in October and not in July and August was because of the heat. So there's a reason why they don't have the Summer Olympics in Singapore. It's hot. There's a reason why you don't have the Summer Olympics in Tokyo. And we're gonna find out how much technology can play a role in cooling down people so they don't get sick. They've actually, the mayor of Tokyo, uh, Mayor Koike, has, has asked people to buy umbrella hats. And if you go take a look, if you go, if you go take a look online, you're gonna find the umbrella hat um, as in a press conference, and they're gonna start selling these, where you put these umbrellas on your head, and that's supposed to cool you down. See, I told you we weren't gonna get the 400 likes. You guys are weak out there. 700 people watching and only 300 likes. Community involvement, so I guess I gotta end the live stream. All right, so <laughs> once I said that, it went, to, it jumped 20 likes real fast. All right, keep liking, guys, and then maybe this will go on a little bit longer. I'm going to take you around the block and show you something uh, else that's pretty interesting about Shimbashi now. So we can extend the live stream a little bit. This cafe above Pronto, this Kisaten is very famous. You can see the Pronto has the first floor and then the next second, third, and fourth floor is a very old Kisaten, which is a cafe. Um, and a lot of them are going out of business. But this coffee shop, of course it has smoking inside. It's a trademark of Japanese Kisaten. 
but it is also a historical place in Shimbashi and you can see here they make a really good they make a really good siphon coffee and the iced coffee is one of the best that I've had in the city I had it here yesterday in a meeting you got to go up the stairs to get in there not a lot of people know about it unless you're a local but this this coffee shop is quite famous in the area all right let's say goodbye to this area the train and the new Shimbashi building make our way around this way for an extended live stream because you guys click the like button Shimbashi is famous famous what's famous about Shimbashi is what you see here the alleyways you got to go around the alleyways and if you do that you're gonna you're gonna discover loads and loads of, of secret places little restaurants and I always tell people when you come to Tokyo get lost like literally just start walking the streets go to an area away from Shinjuku Shibuya go into um, Shimbashi or a place that you wouldn't normally go to and get lost and walk around the streets and you're gonna discover some amazing things that you you never would have discovered if you didn't you know be a little bit bold and go off the beaten path a little bit like this vending machine <laughs> there's the original Mountain Dew there's the original Mountain Dew next to some tomato juice you won't find that anywhere else oh there's an unagi restaurant Oh, they're selling fugu as well in there. Wow, there's a standing bar and people are already drinking in there. Ah, oh, that's a good looking katsudon. What? Oh, okay. Moving on. Yeah, like you walk through these alleys. Do you see this? And on the left and the right, some of these shops have been here for decades, if not like from the end of the World War II when they put these buildings up. A lot of them are family run. The owners are still here. They're clinging just for the next couple of years, I bet you. And a lot of these places are going to go out of business because the sons and daughters of the owner, original owners don't want to really continue the legacy because it's hard work to run a restaurant in this area. And the chains are coming in. There's, I guess that's inevitable. But the chains are coming in. Look at this little little piece of Egypt in here, but there's no Egyptian restaurants in the area. <laughs> it's a yaki, yakitori place. But the chains are moving in, and the result of that is that you, you, you were losing a lot of the identity of what was the Showa era of Japan, the Showa era of Tokyo. Just a really special time where everything was just out open like this it, it's just i'm i wish i was born in the show era but I, I kind of wish that i had seen japan at this time and you can still see it a little bit by walking around the alleys of the cities especially here in Sh uh, Sh shimbashi but i don't know for how much longer look at the sign on this thing it looks like they've washed it the first they haven't washed it since the showa era it's a lot of family run businesses still in existence here but after about 6 30 7 p.m you will see a lot of people whoa <laughs> i'm following you i'm following you on instagram oh hello <laughs> where, are you, where are you from i'm from philippines but i live here for more than 10 years wow what are you doing in shimbashi <laughs> <laughs> well, we just had some lunch oh, okay so i'm actually live right now <laughs> i'm following you <laughs> so you are his follower yeah, I'm the follower. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thanks for saying hi. Bye. Bye. All right. That was cool. I was I was shocked. <laughs> yeah. So it's I I think if you if you really want to see Tokyo and you do visit before the Olympics, jump into some of the side streets, you know, while you can, because the next time you visit, it, it might not be here anymore. They're clearing away a lot of the older buildings just because of earthquake regulations, um, making it stronger, try to avoid fires. Tokyo's always been a city that was susceptible to fires. 
the great, they've had a lot of great fires, one of them caused by fireworks <laughs> in the 19th century, which led to anti-fire laws, meaning you can't have open flames on the streets, no barbecues in parks, for example, because of the great fire. Uh, I think it was Kaguya. Or is it, uh, I don't know, one of the big companies. All right, let's cross the street here. All right, we cross the street. You can see there's the Yamanote line going over the bridge. I did a, a video about a year and a half ago that introduces a place on in Yurakucho Station. <laughs> Excuse me. Inside of Yurakucho Station, on the platform, you can find a spot at the end of it. And if you get the timing right, two trains will go high speed past you from different directions. No, 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 the same direction. And it's the most surreal feeling. Like, if you ever wanted to stand between the track and, and have two trains cross, this is the perfect place. Because, of course, you're going to be safe because you're on the platform. But you're on, like, a corner of it. And I was surprised that video didn't do better than it did. But if you ever get a chance and you're in Tokyo, you're in Yurakucho, check out that video and stand on the end of the platform there because it's one of the most surreal, free feelings. All you need to do is be riding the train and, and uh, walk to the edge there. <laughs> it's a video from about a year and a half ago on the Only in Japan Go channel. I think it only took me about 10 minutes to time it right. So there you go, there's Shimbashi Station on the Ginza line. That's where we came, we walked from. You can see the train on the left side between the buildings. There's Shimbashi Station up there. All right, if you do come here after hours, I wouldn't say after hours, I'd say like at, at 5 p.m. or so, this shop, the shops underneath the tracks here open up. This is one of the best Motsunabe shops in the city, and they've been around for a long time. I remember I came here with um, Chris Pepler, who is the host of the Tokyo Eye, when we, we came on, a, on an outing to Shimbashi. I think it's this one here, and they'll open it up. Um, some really great yakitori and motsunabe in there. But you walk by there, you wouldn't know. And this shop, this shop is pretty good too. In fact, I think it might be this shop. You can see they've got some daikon. They're getting ready to make a soup. Or some, some grated daikon for condiment. Yeah, that might be it right there. Very good yakitori, and in the pot there, motsunabe, really, really good. You sit around the bar, it's really, really vibrant, really fun. People talk to you, they'll try to talk to you. You won't understand anything, <laughs> but that's what makes it kind of fun. All right, and then from this point on, uh, we didn't get the 500 likes, so we can't continue. But from this point, you can see Shiodome very clearly. The old part on the right side is Shimbashi. The new buildings above us are Shiodome. And then to the left is Ginza. And then underneath that bridge starts Ginza Hachome, the eighth, eighth neighborhood of Ginza which you can walk towards there. I probably will to catch my train back. Oh look, now we got the 500. You, you, just, just, you just had to do that, didn't you? You likers. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll take this a little bit longer into Ginza now. We're moving really far away from that clock. People are chiming in right now going, where's the clock? You going back to the clock? I'm not going back to the clock. 
you have to watch the playback but because we keep liking and you know if we even get to 600 I don't know what I'm gonna do this is the Totori Okayama store and inside here you can get gifts and beer and crafts and things like that from Totori Prefecture and Okayama Prefecture it's a collaboration store right now they've got watermelons from Totori on sale they're happy to be on sale soft cream from uh, Dyson I go in here sometimes they have um, oh and here's jeans from Okayama that you can buy from a famous shop Japan has the best jeans in the world or some experts say so yeah that all comes from Okayama There's a Shinkansen rolling by. Boy, it's long. Look at this. Come on now. All right, there's the end of it. Smooth ride. That Shinkansen is a smooth ride. Uh-oh. The bus is saying it's signaling. Sorry, bus. I do have a green light. All right, at this intersection here, we're gonna hang a left, but because I don't think we're gonna get the 600 likes, we're gonna, I'm gonna end the live stream. This shop just opened up, that's what the flowers are for. It's a golf shop, brand new golf shop in Shimbashi. How about that? At this intersection, I'm gonna hang a left, and I'm gonna show you one last thing, which is part of Shimbashi, I would say, yeah, you'd have to get to like a thousand to extend it. I, I got stuff to do today, <laughs> but it, it is always fun to keep to keep it going. The live streams and show more of the city of Tokyo. We're back towards the Shiodome area. This is like a buffer zone, this intersection where you would go to Shimbashi Station, but you, you do see the skyscrapers of Shiodome. And that building right there is pretty much where the clock is. It's underneath there in the maze that is Shiodome. Um, that's where you find the uh, Miyazaki's big Ghibli, Ghibli clock. Mike, did you read my? Did you have a chance to read my email? Yeah, my, my, yeah, yeah, my question was. All right. So the last thing I'm going to show you, unless we get to like five thousand, like one thousand likes, <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen. across the street. Hey Dave Spectre 10, 1065. Hello John, great video. Thank you, Dave. On san 2020. Interesting old and new architecture Shimbashi. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much. And Dave Kimura, thanks for telling me about the 300. Always entertained by your streams. I'm reading some of the super chats that I might have missed here. Sean on KETO. YouTube gave me a free super chat. Oh, Faye was here. Faye Williams. I love the clock. Thanks, Faye. Jim Jones. I know this is a bit of a dark. Okay. I think I read these. Today is my birthday. Hey, Avery. Today is Avery's birthday. Happy birthday. Uh, Tyler, if you're still watching, the tickets to the Ghibli are. The tickets to Ghibli, I'm not sure. But you can get them inside of Lawson's. I don't think that they're that, I don't think they're that expensive. But I know that they, they're resold on the internet for a lot more. Shout out to Ellis. <laughs> He'll like that. So this is the last stop I'm taking you on this wonderful like trip across <laughs> Shiotome Shimbashi to Ginza. We are now in Ginza Hachome. You can see the sign stating that we're in Ginza Hachome. And what's famous about this end of Ginza and is this is where Shimbashi ends and where Ginza starts. This Don Quixote is a tourist hub. Every Chinese tour bus will stop here. 
it stops here and you can see that there's a bus there and there's buses here they stop underneath the bridge people will be here it gets really loud here right now and it's it's okay they line up to go in on this entrance and buy omiyage or stuff to take back to china it's very very famous um you you rarely hear there's some people from you rarely hear uh japanese here i'm actually in a in a group <laughs> wow how you doing this year he is the world famous toy store of Ginza. It's called Haku Hinkan. Inside there you have some amazing collectibles, all sorts of toys. And in the front there, they have some Tokyo 2020 Olympic goods. Let's go take a quick look. Uh, cross, cross, cross. The cars come fast and they come often, so you don't wanna miss the lights. We're now in Ginza proper. This is the Chuodori, the main street that goes through Ginza. You can go straight all the way to Akihabara. It's a nice street. On the weekends, this street shuts down. It is nice. They put chairs and tables out here. You can relax, enjoy Ginza the proper way. In the front of the shop right there, sorry about the wind. You have a zoo. <laughs> How you doing? And then you have, there's some Tokyo Olympic goods here. Let's see here, what are the prices on these things? They're very interesting pins and neckties and things like that you can buy here. That's a nice looking necktie. Um, it's a little pricey. I think that's about $50. The t-shirts are going for about $25 for some of these down here. Oh no, those are towels, sorry. Oh, they don't have any t-shirts. Oh, the t-shirts are going between $30 and $40. A little bit pricey there. But then again, they have to pay for the Olympics one way, right? I mean, they're going to pay for it with merchandising. Here are some of the pins that you can get for the 2020 Olympics. And then they have other licensed products. They're getting very creative with the products. With these two mascots of the Tokyo 2020 games. Do you know their names? Because I don't. <laughs> I keep forgetting. Oh, Peter and I came here and we got to see um, a life si a life size Rika Chan. And if you're a, a, a fan, if you're a fan of Rika Chan, the doll. If you go down here, you'll be able to see the Rika-chan's shop. And I would, I would love to come down here sometime and take you. I, I'm just going to do a quick up and down. But you can see inside here, there's a Rika-chan shop. And it is so cute. If you're a fan of Rika-chan, you're going to love going in here. Because this is Rika-chan paradise. but not least for the never-ending stream that's where I take I took uh, Peter to lunch or sorry Peter to dinner once at that Hooters he's very happy <laughs> and finally the streets of Ginza and I showed you all this before in other live streams so this connects with other live streams always get off of the main road on in Ginza and go to the alleys the side streets you'll find things like this this is a unique Pokemon vending machine that's not like any anywhere else it's really unique they don't even have any Pokemon drinks no Pikachu drinks but the vending machine itself is unique you won't find um, many like that that looks like a non-sponsored I'm sure it is, but it's different than the other ones I found. Oh, these are real dogs. I thought that was a, I thought that was a fake dog. It's real. Well, that's a real dog. Or 
Oh, it's a really good robot. I don't know if that's a real dog or... It's interesting. Not far away from here is where I'm gonna get my lunch. Delicious Katsudon restaurant. I'm gonna sneak into. Oh, there's the old Sento. Forget what it's called. Kimpa. Kin. I've never been in there. Kinyo. But uh, Ginza being a high class town, you wouldn't think you'd find an old Sento, but you do here. Right here. It's a Sento. This is a public bath in the streets of uh, Ginza. So you just walk through here, the brave people, and you can buy a towel, I believe, inside there. I think it's not open yet, but uh, it's one of the old bathhouses of Ginza. It's on the Google Maps. You'll be able to find it easy, which means you could probably track me right now. Wow, that's pretty cool. Tons of sushi shops on this side. Some of the top sushi chefs back in the day, in the 1950s and 60s, they opened up their shops here. Not, not so much near um, Skiji Market, but here in Ginza because it, it was close to Skiji Market, but it also had this uh, luxury appeal. So all of the high-end sushi shops, they, they basically started here. And uh, you'll find them in the alleys of Ginza. Uh, Kyube is just down here, I believe. Or is it the street over? I think it's the street over. Kyube is one of the first um, high-end sushi places that I visited when I came to Japan. Wow, it was like t 12 years ago, and a client of mine took me. A client that is famous for making manga, actually. And they took me out on the company dime <laughs> and paid. And, and, the, and the director of the company, I, can I tell you this story? Can I tell you, can I tell you this? I guess I could tell you this. It's 12 years removed, right? I could tell you this. Okay, so the, the director of the company who took me out for, for dinner, um, he also brought two hostess girls with him. And the girls got free Kyube sushi. They came in these beautiful kimono. And it was me, him, and these two, two hostess girls. At, and we weren't in the hostess club. This was outside dining. So I bet you he was paying an arm and a leg for their time as well as the dinner. And at the end of the dinner, he slapped down um, 100,000 yen, just 10,000 10, yen notes, like in cash, and got a receipt for his company. And I was just, my mouth dropped, because it cost, first of all, $1,000 for the four people to eat dinner. But that's a pretty shop. But that, you know, this is what, and okay, and then he told me, I, I don't know if I should tell you this story, but then he told me, look, um, one of the advantages to becoming the director of a company, it's not the salary, but it's the expense account that comes with it. You can now take the money and use it for entertainment purposes, entertain clients. And that was part of his right. Because when he was younger, he worked really hard. And when he got to that level, he could use his funds. He could use the discretionary funds for entertainment too. And at the end of the month, if he didn't use it, he would lose it. So he would call me up and we would go out and use it. And we did this for a couple of years. And I got a chance to discover um, a different side of the city of Tokyo that I don't think anyone else has ever discovered before. Um, well, I mean, I, I say that in a way like, I, I, I don't know any of my friends that have. Yeah, you have to know somebody who has company money, big old company money <laughs> in order to do that. Oh, there's, I, I think Kyube is right next to Barney's. Yeah, and this is the first high-end sushi chef that he took me with the company money right here on the corner. And I should call Kyube to see if they'll give me permission to go in and film. I would love to, to film Kyube because it's an old, old shop where the, I believe the son is now running it from his father. It's a very old shop. Yeah, there it is. So let's see if I can take you to the front of Kyube. This is where we met the hostess girls right in front, right in front of this uh, pharmacy. I got a ton of stories. 
you have no idea <laughs> all, the, all the stuff that I've, I've experienced in the 20 years here. I know we met. Is that Cubay there? I thought there were some stairs to walk up. I haven't been here in ages. Is that it there? Uh, I think it might be the street behind. It's a nice looking shop though. It's a nice looking shop. Yeah, I haven't been to Cuba in a long time. I think it's the street behind. But I do remember we met the hostess girls there because um, Barney's New York has a shop right there. And on the corner here is uh, the pharmacy. And so we got out of a taxi because his headquarters is, is on the other side of the city. So I would go to his headquarters, we'd jump into a taxi, talk, and then we'd get out here. And we met, we met them right on the corner. And then we walked into, into the restaurant. I think it could be, I don't know, it's been such a long time. I think it could be right there on the other side. But the owner of Cubase had this had the shop for a very long time. And I think it was one of the first, I, I, I don't know the history too much of it, but I just know that it's one of the most highly recommended, probably one of the first that might have gotten Michelin stars. And they have a reasonable lunch lunch menu. It's, it's around here somewhere. I, gosh, I can't remember. Those days are, are long gone. Those days are long gone. Well, thanks everybody for joining me on this on this stream that went way way too long. We're still 14 away from extension, so I'm just gonna call it because I'm starting to lose my voice and I have some narration to do for the next Only in Japan video. I hope you did like the last video. That was the uh, um, uh, Kochi Shimanto River video. It wasn't very popular, and I say that, but it's still got a hundred thousand views on it but it's not like wildly popular like the other ones but it's one of the more beautiful videos I think you get a chance to see something outside of the city of Tokyo so definitely go take a look and leave a comment if you liked it because then I'll keep making stuff like that it does not pay for youtubers to make cultural stuff because not a lot of people watch it but it does make a pretty good episode I think all right everybody thanks a lot for watching I'm gonna go have some lunch uh, definitely hit that like button and leave me a comment below if you have anything you want to say about the Miyazaki talk or the Only Japan Go channel. Join us on the Discord server. The link will be somewhere either in the description or in the chat. Thanks everybody. Have a good day wherever you are. Enjoy the beautiful summer because I believe on the 21st we hit summer and that's what we're doing right now. Summertime. Bye from Ginza. Very far away from that clock we started 79 minutes ago.